I told my grandma, I said, but people really do laugh at my jokes. And she turned to me and she said, people do stupid things. <laughs> Brian Carter is a popular speaker. Brian Carter, let's look at this. Let's talk about AI for business leaders. How can leaders use AI the best way, when to adopt it, what to adopt, and how does it all work? These are big questions. AI is a, an exploding field, hopefully not explosions from robots attacking us, but exploding in terms of interest and, and it, the effects it can have. There's a stat here that 54% of executives say that AI solutions implemented in their business have increased productivity. Tons of different stats out there. Anywhere from 25 to 50% of businesses are adopting AI right now. Everyone's interested in it. And it already has some surprising, surprising uses to me, even just researching what's being done and some of the keynotes I'm being asked to do in very specific niches. But let's talk generally first. What can you use AI for in business? Well, first, we can automate business processes, uh, routine tasks, free up employees to spend time on more valuable things like strategic planning and creative problem solving. That can lead to increased productivity and job satisfaction. For example, AI could automate customer service inquiries or financial data analysis. And I will tell you, <laughs> using AI to improve customer service would be great because right now the solutions that a lot of companies are using don't use AI and they don't even use humans because they're trying to figure out a way to not have to talk to their customers and see what they can get away with for, to improve profit margins. And I'll tell you, it, it it's a losing strategy in the long run because you people will choose other companies. This happened to me recently when I was traveling for a keynote to Vegas and I had issues getting a, head, a, a hold of the, the car rental company. I had issues talking to anybody at the hotel I was in. Just insane stuff. So getting an AI LLM chat machine on your customer service, I would love if everybody would do that. It's not that expensive. Data analysis and insights, another usage. So analyze vast amounts of data, provide insights that go beyond traditional data analysis. There are a lot of tools that can do this, help with decision-making and predictive analytics. We can examine past performance metrics, market trends, consumer behavior patterns, forecast future outcomes, and do that with a, a precision that surpasses traditional methods of data analysis. So whether you're doing it yourself or you have a data uh, team and they use it, highly recommend that. I've used it for a lot of things, analyzing advertising account performance, taking large amounts of recordings I have and giving me insights on what's in them, things like that, and get them transcribed and all that. So there's a lot of different things you can use it for. Improving customer and employee relations. Wow. So CRM systems can be self-updating. They can be auto-correcting. There's a tool called lena.ai that... Tools like that are revolutionizing HR and employee support functions. I would tell you, for example, one of the biggest frustrations people have with hiring and getting hired is that the HR systems are, I don't know, steampunk computers from the 1850s. <laughs> if you don't put the exact right words in your application, it's not going to get seen. So they're over filtering and people, managers that are trying to hire new people aren't even seeing some of the best candidates. If you can get something that's computerized, so it's efficient, but it's also more intelligent than just a search function, it can analyze the language and the entire resume and all those things. And also, again, give you data insights on the applications that you're getting. So we can not only be efficient and cost effective with HR, but we can also get better results. Enhancing productivity. AI can enhance and increase business productivity. AI-powered presentation software can help to create stunning presentations, save you time, boost productivity, reduce time spent on mundane ta tasks. Along those lines, it's interesting you can use tools like ChatGBT or Claude that are really good with language, and you can ask them to take something you're writing that you're going to a speech you're going to write, and and how would 
another great speaker, just name one. How would they uh, do this? What would they do differently? You can even use it to the same way you can use it to train you on languages. You can have it train you on writing speeches if that's part of what you do as a leader. Even simple things like every day, like how should I say this to this person? If you're not sure, you can ask those kinds of questions. AI can also help with strategic decision-making, support strategic decision-making by providing data-driven insights, help you automate the execution of business strategy. You can even use it to brainstorm, right? Which is really cool if you just ask it to become a brainstorming machine to give you feedback or guide you through a brainstorming process. It helps you think quicker and more productively. Knowledge management. How can we enhance that? There are some tools out there such as Tala.ai, that's T-A-L-L-A.ai, that help improve the way that teams collaborate and access information. AI can speed up business operations, enable shorter cycles, deliver better and more immediate ROI. It just helps you do everything faster and better. It's pretty cool. I've tried to use it for pretty much anything I can think of, even in life stuff. Oh, I got to get some new fences. What kind should I get? And how expensive are they going to be? And what are the, what kind of foundation do they need? And so on. So back to business, new capabilities and business model expansion. AI can be used for business model expansion, opening up new capabilities and opportunities. Now, there are some drawbacks of AI also. It still needs to be shepherded or wrangled by a human being because there's a level of quality assurance we need to work on. We can't, they, they are fallible and sometimes they take shortcuts and it depends on whether you're using like an enterprise account or application or you're using one of the public facing ones that's trying to save on their processing speed and it may take shortcuts and it may not give you the best answer. And some AIs are better at searching the web than others. So there's a lot of things to look into there. It, it really needs um, people that are educating themselves on AI. What are the options? What are the tools? How do you make sure it's not giving you bad answers? And we're still going to need human experts on these things. You don't want to do a big financial analysis and find out that it was wrong later on because you didn't check it. So it's a machine like any other. It's like a car. It can do things, but you still have to drive it. It can improve High, highly skilled worker productivity, but it can sometimes reduce the diversity of ideas that you get because it's drawing from, in a lot of cases, only drawing from things it already knows. So you try to get it to tell you a new idea and it gives you a whole bunch of ideas that are written on blog posts that are, you know, are called new ideas or whatever. It's not actually new unless you know how to get it to start from scratch and create something new, right? So always good to have humans alongside in the brainstorming and, and creative process with AI. And that's it. That's the general way that, that AI can be used by business leaders in business. It gets a lot more specific and complicated when we talk about specific job roles or specific industries. I'll get into those in other videos. Hope that was helpful for you. If you like this AI stuff, subscribe, follow me, like it. Send me a nice note with some candy, whatever you want to do. That's fine. I'm Brian Carter. I'm a keynote speaker and I talk about AI.